Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And this is my next in the series of comparison videos where I compare the White Sox to a team that we will play in 2021. Now, as I've said before, we this year for the National League, we play the National League Central, as we did last year. So, I've already done the Cubs, and they are the only team in the Central I've done so far. Of course, we play the Cubs every year, regardless of whether we're playing the NL, the NL Central, East, or West. But, we are playing the, Central, the other Central teams this year. And so, in that vein, we have the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yes, the lowly Pittsburgh Pirates. So we will compare the White Sox to the Pirates in 2021. Now, as I always do, I will do a quick recap of the White Sox and let you know where they stand. Now, as you can see on the board, I do not have the uh, bench players listed. I will go over the bench players and I will, you know, put them in, you know, on the, on the video screen, right in writing on the video screen, but they're not on my board. I didn't have room and really they're bench players. So anyway, that means we're going to jump into it and do the White Sox. Now, last year, as I've said repeatedly, the White Sox tied for second in the AL Central with the Cleveland Indians with a record of 35 and 25. We were first in the major leagues in home runs with 96, and we were second in the AL in team batting average with a 261 average. The lineup. Again, not really the lineup. Or it could be, but that's up to Tony La Russa. And as you can see on my board, Tony La Russa, manager of the White Sox. So the lineup really is up to him, but this is what I found on RotoChamp as a lineup. And so we'll go with it. That's fine. Um, Tim Anderson at shortstop. He hit 322 last year for the White Sox. Adam Eaton in right field, batting second. Of course, that would be versus uh, right-handed pitching, possibly, and Adam Engel platooning with him and playing right field against lefties. However, last year, Engel was pretty good against both, so we'll see. Maybe Eaton is just a backup outfielder. I don't know, but you got to believe the White Sox didn't go out and sign him to a contract to be a fourth backup outfielder. Nick Madrigal at second. He had a very good year last year. Yes, Monty Grandall, he had kind of a down year for us, but we're hoping for a bounce back. Although he was doing a lot of playing in those 60 games. And hence, that's the reason we need a good backup. Uh, Jose Abreu at first base. He had 19 home runs last year in 60 games. And he didn't even play all 60 games. So, yeah. Uh, Eloy Jimenez in left field. Johan Moncada at third. Luis Robert in center. Now, in past videos, I've said that Robert hit 251 last year. I was giving him a little bit too much credit. He actually hit 233 last year. Uh, but he is a gold glove caliber center fielder. You know, the sky's the limit with him. I expect him to do better in coming uh, years, starting with 2021. But, um, you know, that's offensively. He still did have some pop, though, and he is, uh, like I said, great defensive center fielder. And then perhaps Lurie Garcia at DH, although it might also be um, Andrew Vaughn, who might also make the club out of spring training. Again, depends on... Tony La Russa. Um, the rotation would be something like Lance Lynn. Giolito, who had a 1.04 whip for us last year. 
Dallas Keuchel, who had a 199 earned run average last year, Dylan Cease, Michael Kopech, and possibly Ronaldo Lopez or Carlos Rodon or any, some combination thereof, and even um, uh, Lopez and Rodon as the last two in that rotation with Kopech not joining the rotation until later in the year. That's also a possibility. It depends because Kopech didn't pitch last year. So the White Sox need to stretch him out a little bit, maybe give him some time to start in the minors. Maybe they'll start him um, in the rota or in the uh, bullpen as a reliever and give him, you know, start him like one inning here for a few appearances, then two innings for a few appearances, then three innings for a few appearances. However, that's a tough thing to do when at the same time you are expected to and trying to win. But we'll see. We'll see how they do it. It's up to Tony La Russa again. Um, the bullpen would be Liam Hendricks, uh, Cody Hewer, Aaron Bummer, Evan Marshall, Matt Foster, um, Jimmy Cordero, Jace Fry, and the flamethrower, Garrett Crotchet. And, uh, you know, that guy, he can throw some, he can throw some gas over 100 miles an hour. Uh, the bench is Adam Engel when he's not playing in right field. Um, Danny Mendick, uh, Nick Williams, and Zach Collins right now is the backup catcher. Uh, he hasn't gotten a lot of playing time in uh, his times, you know, up and down between the minors and the majors. So hopefully he has this, hopefully the stick lives up to the reputation and he will, and also that he, he works on his defense a little bit in spring training and comes out as a uh, viable option as a catcher so that he can give Grandall you know, a breather here and there as needed. Um, and then also, as I said, Andrew Vaughn may also make the club out of spring training and be an option at DH, be an option at first base, where and then let Abreu play DH or give Abreu a day off. All of those things are on the table. We'll see how, you know, what direction La Russa decides to go with that. So... That, my friends, is the White Sox. Now let's do the Pirates. Now, Pirates pregame. Presented by W.B. Mason. Yeah, we're going to switch gears here and do the Pirates. Now, the Pirates last year were a rather depressing 19 and 41 not good their manager is Derek Shelton for some reason he took this job um, the Pirates as you may know have sent Josh Bell packing so now Josh Bell is on the uh, Washington Nationals and he was a legit offensive threat that the Pirates used to have but now they don't. So that makes their lineup something along the lines of Adam Frazier at second base, Kebrian Hayes at third, Colin Moran, who actually was pretty good last year. He hit only 247, but he had 10 home runs in the 60 game season. Um, Brian Reynolds in right field. He is generally a pretty good player, although last year he hit 189. But he is projected to 262 and 17 home runs for um, 2021. That's kind of a combined mishmash uh, projection of several sources. But, you know, I mean, he is generally he's a good player. He should have he should have been better than 189 for sure. Gregory Polanco in left, Anthony Alford in center, Jacob Stallings at catcher, 
Kevin Newman or Eric Gonzalez potentially at shortstop. Might be Eric Gonzalez, might be Newman, depends on what source you look at. I had a magazine that said it was Eric Gonzalez, and then um, Roto Champ Online said it would be Kevin Newman. Again, that's up to Derek Sheldon. So nobody bothered to ask him, I'm sure. So we'll see who their shortstop ends up being. Uh, their rotation will line up as something like Stephen Brault, Mitch Keller, Jonathan Brubaker, Chad Cool, and Tyler Anderson. Now, Tyler Anderson, Brault, and Mitch Keller have been on the team. They were on the team last year. And actually, so was Cool, and Cool has been an injury problem. Um, he pitched last year. But I think the year before that, he was rehabbing from either Tommy John or something, some big injury, um, which kept him out. So he has had injury issues in his career. He's a decent starter. He's a back-end starter, though. And, um, you know, so is Brault, really, and so is Mitch Keller. They're all back-end starters that have to, you know, somebody has to be at the front of that rotation, unfortunately for the Pirates. Um, the, the bullpen options for the Pirates are um, many. Uh, there's Richard Rodriguez, Chris Stratton, Michael Feliz, Jason Shreve, Kyle Crick, Sam Howard, Carson Fulmer, who was on the White Sox. If you're a White Sox fan watching this, you remember Carson Fulmer. Never really panned out very much for us. Really not at all. And so now he's on the Pirates. And now he's where, you know, people that don't pan out go to Pittsburgh. Uh, David Bednar, Clay Holmes, and Tyler Bachelor. Those are their bullpen options. Now, if you're a Pirates fan watching this, you want to, you know, you got some other guys that you know of for the lineup or the bench or the bullpen doesn't matter. Let me know. Um, and then, of course, their bench options are looking like Cole Tucker, Todd Frazier, the Todd father, the Todd father, Philip Evans, Brian Goodwin, um, who used to be on the Nationals and also used to be on the Angels, I believe. Uh, Tony Walters, the backup catcher. He used to be in Colorado. Jared o o Oliva, J.T. Riddle, and Wilmer Defoe, and he was on the Nationals as well. When I look at this team, I'm reminded of a line from uh, Major League, the movie Major League, where one of the executives looked at the roster that the new owner wanted to invite to spring training, and he said, I don't know half of these guys. And the ones I do know are past their primes. So, yeah. I mean, that's the kind of roster the Pirates are going to field this year. 19-41 uh, and 41 for a 60-game stretch. That's looking kind of optimistic with this group. You know, unless a lot of guys take a step forward. Because, you know, you hear some... So people will say, well, you know, and if some of their rookies make a big step forward, well, you know, pretty much everybody on this roster has to make a big step forward to have a uh, competitive team. So, yeah, I mean, um, what are my thoughts on us playing them this year? Time to pay the fiddler. We should sweep them. Sweep them. Um, I don't know I, offhand. I don't. I didn't check how many times we play them. May only be three times. Um, might be six, might be five. I don't know what it is, but whatever that number is, it better be that and O oh for the White Sox against this team. Now, it's baseball, so you never really know. Maybe you catch Chad Cool on a really good day. Maybe you catch Mitch Keller on a really good day, although I don't even know that a good day for Mitch Keller is a good day. But, who knows. 
But yeah, I mean, we should really beat up on the Pirates. Again, if you're expected to be a playoff team, and the White Sox are, you need to beat up on the teams that you're supposed to beat up on. And the Pirates are one of those teams. So, that is my analysis of our... Uh, you know, comparing our, our White Sox to the Pittsburgh Pirates. What do you guys think? You like the analysis? Do you think I'm on base with it? Do you think I'm really just out of my mind? I mean, again, not a lot of these guys have had great seasons, meaning the Pirates. Um, so, we'll see what happens, but that's what I got for you. And that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.